Honiton, we've come out to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that gospel is good news. It's good news for me, and it's good news for you if you would but believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, my friends, Jesus came into the world because God so loved the world. Jesus came into the world that men and women like you and I would not die and perish according to our sins, but would rather receive forgiveness from Him and have His righteousness so that we could be justified in the sight of God, given eternal life, which means we will be with Him forever and ever, never to depart, never to be cast out or forsaken, as we so often are in this world, never to be rejected or isolated. But Jesus came to envelop you in His willing and loving arms and for all eternity. And this is a perfect relationship. Perfect relationship because of the love of God that atones for sin. But you see, my friends... We must deal with our sin in the person of Jesus and in his crucifixion where he bore the punishment that was due for our sins if we are to come and to enjoy the fullness then of his love and acceptance, of his mercy, of his grace. You see, you might ask the question, why is that necessary? Why does it matter so much whether I have sins, as it were, in my life. You might ask that question, why does it matter so much? And I can tell you that God is holy, that he's righteous, that he's the thrice holy God. But do you know as well, there is something very simplistic about it, which is that God, when he describes himself as love, loves that which is good, loves that which is of him loves that which brings forth life and fruitfulness and fullness, just like, to a much greater degree, but just like you do as well. You see, you also love what is good. In a sense, that is why you have a sense of justice. That is why you have a sense uh, that people should not kill each other, or that people should not steal from each other, or that people should not tell each other lies. It is because you have a sense that you ought to love that which is good. And that is right and honourable in each and every man and each and every woman. But the issue is, my friends, that God's sense of justice and God's love for truth and goodness goes much further than our own. And that is because God really truly understands the nature of sin far better than you and I do. So you might have told some lies when you were younger. You might tell lies to this day, but you consider them to be small lies. You don't consider them to be great lies. And so you think, well, God's not really going to have an issue with me telling my few little lies, my few little white lies. God won't have a problem with that. God is kind. God is gracious. It's precisely because God is kind and gracious that he has a problem with every sin. No matter how small we think it is, every sin God has a problem with. And the question is, why? Well, the answer, my friend, is because sin, as the Bible tells us, always brings forth death. The reason that men and women get old in this life and eventually perish and eventually die is because of sin. That sin came into the world where there once was no sin. Man introduced it and so now we suffer the consequences of sin and the wages of sin which is death that means that all of our lives we accrue as it were our wages if, if you go to work on a specific day and you work eight hours you expect your pay to merit those eight hours you expect whatever work you've done to merit your wage right you will receive a wage for every hour that you work okay 
Well, in God's eyes, it's no different with sin. And so your whole lives, our whole lives, we accrue more and more and more and more sin. And the wages of that sin with God is death. It always brings forth death. Would you like an Easter message? And so because God is love, because God is kind, because God is gracious, because God loves life and all that is good, He hates all that is death. He hates all that is sin. In the Bible, Jesus describes death as an enemy. It is the final enemy to be overcome. It's the enemy that is overcome by Jesus dying upon the cross, being buried in the grave, and rising to eternal life on the third day. And so we have the proof in Jesus that death has finally been overcome, and with it, sin and its consequences. All overcome in the person of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know about you, but I think it is very sensible and very right that the Lord God hates death. Consider the fact that we have parked here on the street an ambulance. And we have paramedics doing their best to save life. And that is good and that is noble and that is honourable. And praise God for that. Praise God for that. God is of a like nature, desiring to save life. But God can even save your life unto eternal life. So not just temporarily save your life and give you temporal life, but He can give you life for all of eternity in Himself. And that is because He has dealt with sin in Himself. He has destroyed the power of it, the power of sin and death, all destroyed in the person of Jesus Christ. For whosoever believes in Him, now, what a glorious truth that is. And you can see why Jesus called himself the physician. He is, in fact, the great physician. He is the greatest healer that there ever was. Now, and ever is, and ever will be. But you see, Jesus didn't just come to take away physical sicknesses. He did that in his ministry. He took away many people's physical sicknesses. But he comes to deal with the root of sin and death in your life. And to uproot it and to destroy it completely and utterly. That you might have in its place his righteousness and his eternal life. My friends, this is a powerful truth. And it displays God's love for you and for me while we were yet sinners that he died for us. And, glory be to God, that he did not stay in that tomb in which he was laid, but that he rose from the dead. This is a life-saving work that Jesus came to do. And you would be wise to pay heed to it, and to take full advantage of the opportunity that is being laid before you today to come to the living God and to receive from him the waters of life. Yes, in your life you have merited death. Through your sin you've merited death. The Bible makes it clear. Every single one of us merits death and so eventually that's what we receive. But Jesus Christ came to destroy that law of sin and death. That you could know the liberty of his perfect law which is expressed in him. It's freedom from sin. It is eternal life in Jesus Christ. Now my friends, I don't know about you, but I want to receive this eternal life forever and ever. I want to receive Christ in greater measure forever and ever. And you know, that is the sign of a regenerate heart. It's the person who not only has received Christ, but then because they have received Christ, want more and more and more and more of Him. My friends, what good is it if you desire more and more and more of sin in this life? What good is it if you push Jesus Christ away so that you can have your few short years of sin and self-determined purpose, the goals that you've set for yourself in life, 
when the end result of all that plotting, of all that planning, of all that running, of all that willing, of all that working, is death. What's the point of it, my friend? The wages of sin is death. Think about it seriously, my friends. This is a challenge to the way that you view the world. This is a challenge to the way that I view the world. For there are so many things in the world that we can think seem good, and so many plans and ideas that we can have that seem good, but ultimately the Bible describes their end as destruction. The, the Bible describes their end as death. And that is true, isn't it, of life? All around the world, people die. Every single one. The Bible says it is appointed once unto a man to be born, and then eventually to die, and then to face judgment. My friends, that's for every single one of us. Why? Because we've all sinned. And we all with our lives accrue yet more and more of it. Even the little things that you think are not sins are in fact sins. You know, the Bible says that if you so much as plough a field without God, then you commit sin. You are, you are an idolater. Why? Because the purpose for you ploughing that field is not the glory of God. It does not have God as the rightful object of your worship. And so it makes you an idolater. Well, idolatry is sin. It recognizes something or somebody else as God other than God. And therefore it's a sin. You see, our purpose in life really ultimately is not just to receive salvation from God. Praise be to God for salvation. But our goal in life is ultimately to glorify and worship God. Jesus said that the meaning of life was to know God and to know the one whom he'd sent, which was himself. That is the meaning and the purpose of life, to know God. And that sense of knowing him is an intimate one. It is not just a sort of intellectual assent. It's not just a sort of intellectual agreement that he is God and that Jesus is the one whom he sent. No, no. It is a deep knowing. The Bible uses the same word when it describes the way that Adam knew Eve. This is intimate relationship. This is a deep and intimate knowledge of one another. And this is the way that Jesus says that you can know the Father and that you can know him, the eternal Son of God. My friends, you ought to be chomping at the bit to grasp hold of this message and to receive it for yourself and for your own life. Because in it is the promise of eternal life with God of endless days of paradise with him, of joy eternal with him. Just think of that. Anything that you enjoy doing in your life right now pales in comparison to the joy that the born-again believer in Christ will have for all eternity. Everything in your life at this moment that you count worthwhile, everything that you count good, will pale into insignificance in comparison to the joy that awaits those who love Jesus Christ. And so what we are offering you today, my friend, is that which is infinitely better than anything else that you could live your life for right now. But the challenge is, what are you going to do with it, Honiton? Because the joy of Christ and the peace of Christ awaits you. He's willing. He holds out his arms day and night to a rebellious generation. But what of our hearts? You see, my friends, because of our sin, we are in a sense blinded to the goodness of God. And the Bible says that even Satan himself, the enemy, has blinded the eyes of those who do not believe. He has blinded their eyes. And so there is a veil, as it were, that is over your eyes that we wish to take away by the preaching of this word. We wish to reach over with a hand and just strip that veil away from your eyes so that you can see God and know God as he truly is. And we do that through preaching his word. You see, because there is no other way Paul himself said, how will they believe if they do not hear? And how will they hear without a preacher? And so the purpose of the preaching, my friends, is to reveal God to you. It's Where to reveal the joy of Christ. Sorry, what? Where is he? Where is he? 
Yeah. Yeah. God is everywhere. God is in all things because he's omniscient. So okay, he's an omnipresent. We go to church, so it's right, fine. It's okay. We do talk to him. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> but he's a person as well, so he's, he's the Son, he's the Father and the Spirit. You know, we've lived just nearly 80 years, so we, yeah. Yeah, no, that's all right. I just want to, I just yeah. want to help, that's yeah. all. But seek him in the person of Jesus Christ. For that is where he is to be found. You know, Jesus Christ is like the sunbeams of the sun. Okay? Without the beams of the sun reaching earth, you could never see the sun. You would never know it was there. The sun itself remains brilliant and bright, but without those beams reaching the earth, we would never know that it was there. And the same is true of God. Without Jesus Christ, the light who came into the world, into the darkness of this world, to illuminate the darkness of this world, and to reveal to you Himself, to reveal to you the Father in Him, Without this light, we would never know God. And so Jesus Christ reveals God to you by His very nature, and by what He does, and by what He says. All that He is. And so you must seek God in the person of Jesus Christ. Not in a sort of abstract way, but in a very real and personal way. Through the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus said that without the Son, you don't have the Father. So in order to know God, in order to have a relationship with Him, you must know this Son of God, this Jesus Christ. And that is the key, my friends. Is that you would know God in the person of Jesus Christ. Hi there. Hello, how are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. How long have you guys been here today? You been here long or just got here? Um, well, I don't know how long I've been preaching for. I'll just check on here. So we've been preaching for 17 minutes, but we were here for a fair bit before that. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. yeah. Everything all right? Going good? Yeah, everything's fine, thank yeah. you. Yeah. No issues? No, not at all. No, we're happy. happy days. Happy Do you like an Easter message? No, I'm good, thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. All right. No, we're well, thank you. Yeah, all the kids are finishing school now, so I'm sure you'll get a lot of them walk past. So. That's all right, yeah. yeah. No, all right. don't mind. all the banter's water off a duck's yeah. back anyway, so <laughs> God bless them. All right, we'll leave you to And us. God bless right. you both. Thank, you, thank you very much. Cheers. My friends, I've explained to you the way in which to know God is to come through His Son, Jesus Christ. And that has been the purpose of my preaching, to lead you to that point and to give you a desire to seek His eternal life. Amen. To compare and contrast it with the sin that we enjoy currently in this life, which is fleeting and temporal. It's here today, it's gone tomorrow. Indeed, the letter of James says, your life is like a vapour. Which means it's here and then it's gone in a moment. You know, if you look at the steam rising off a kettle, you know, it's there for a moment, isn't it? But then it's gone. And that's the way that the letter of James in the Bible describes our life. In the light of eternity, it's like that steam. It's just there for a moment and then it's gone again. And so no matter what you can enjoy within those few steam-filled moments, as it were, within those few vapour-filled moments, it's entirely fleeting. And because it's entirely fleeting, it pales into insignificance in the, in the light of the eternal joy and bliss of the Saviour, Jesus Christ. This higher purpose and meaning of life is vital to your soul even now. For all of us need purpose and meaning in life, don't we? We need hope, we need love, we need fulfilment and satisfaction in this life. But these things do not come through sin. These things do not come from any other source but Jesus Christ himself. And so we want you to receive his fullness of life. You know, it might be tempting for you to think that all this mention of sin and, and how God hates sin and, and all of my explanations to try to show you why God hates sin for your good, you might think that the purpose of my message is to in some way show dislike or hatred towards you, but not at all. 
The goal of my message is that you would receive eternal life in Christ. Not that you would perish in your sin, but that you would come into an eternal relationship with the Son of God, that you would know His grace and His mercy to you. Because He demonstrated that grace and mercy when He died upon the cross for you. And my friends, it's for whosoever would come. So if you ask the question, well, did God really show His love for me and did He really die for me? Then the answer is yes, if you would but come to Him. So come to Him this day. Don't delay. Take up this free offer of salvation that is yours. Claim hold of it. Pray and seek the Lord. Ask that He would save you. This is the key, my friend. But as I have said, leading you to this point, the key recognition is to seek this eternal life and this forgiveness of sins in the person of Jesus Christ. Seek it in a real relationship and fellowship with Him. For that is what He desires for you. And believe me, what God desires for you, what God desires for us is infinitely better than anything we can conceive of ourselves. You know, no matter whether you're old or young in life, whether you are retired or whether you are a student, you all have hopes and aspirations in life. I remember when I was a child I wanted to do all sorts of things and be all sorts of things. And you realize as time passes by that these things ultimately are somewhat futile. That the years slowly pass one after another and before you know it, you're somewhere in your 30s and then eventually in your 40s and into your 50s. And none of these things have really materialized in the way that you hoped and aspired that they might. But my friends, in Jesus Christ, there is a promise, a guarantee. A guarantee that everything He sets forth for those who love Him will come to pass. You know, the Bible says that no, um, it, what no ear has heard what no eye has seen, what no one has even imagined, what God has prepared and is preparing for those who love Him. But it says, but the Spirit of, Re of God reveals them. Why? Because they are revealed in the person of Jesus Christ who the Spirit points you towards. But they're only found in Him. They are not found in any other. They are found in Jesus Christ. Young man, you're too young for that language. How old are you, young man? You're 14. Too young for that language. But the Lord loves you. He gave His life for you upon the cross that you could have His eternal life, His righteousness, His peace, His joy, His goodness. This free will offer of salvation is for all who would come to Him. I want to read to you a passage from Matthew 7. Where Jesus says, Ask, and it shall, shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened for you. For every one that seeketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Now, this is a guarantee that if you seek the Lord, that if you come to him earnestly, that he will provide out of his riches for you. That you will receive this goodness of God, this eternal life of Christ. It's a guarantee for any who seek. And so if you seek with your heart, with your whole heart, and you believe with your heart, and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, then this is for you. Just, just, a, just a quick one. Um, yes, sir. When, I know, obviously, you can say all that stuff, that's absolutely fine. 
But I think the problem is some of the kids and some of the people walking past are feeling a little bit intimidated when you're pointing at them and sort of walking up to them. Oh, I'm not pointing at anybody. Or no, I, oh, I saw you do it. I saw you go like that. No, I gesture, gesture yeah. with my hands. So it's I say, just, this is for yeah. you. And that's to everyone. That's not just to... I'm not pointing out one individual. No, but they're, they're, I, I have watched you sort of address certain people and, and obviously say, which is absolutely fine, but they're just being a little bit intimidated. So all I'm saying is just a, a little bit careful about how you... Yeah, I mean, I try to be careful with how I say all things, and how I gesture, and how I, I'm not, I'm not pointing the finger at anybody no, like no. that. Even, even if, I mean, absolutely fine. It's, it's say what you need to say, um, addressing everyone. But when I think we've, we've had three different people come up to us now and just say they feel a little bit anxious to walk past and a little bit intimidated just by the way. Well, have you heard anything intimidating in what I'm, I've preached? I'm, I'm not saying you're saying anything intimidating. Right, I'm okay. saying so that's the, the important thing. Not, not, no, it's not. I mean, my face fun. isn't. I mean, I, I'm. I'm not sort of angry, and you know. I'm, no, but I'm, the, the I'm, gestures so and, and, and people, like, like, like I said, it's not, yeah. it's not. I'm not saying the contents of what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying just the body language. People are just a little bit intimidated. So, well, that's what I'm saying. Just be wary of because. Yeah, don't yeah. Want, I'm not trying to intimidate no, people no, 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 at all. I'm, at all. I'm, I'm not yeah. saying that's your intention at all. No. I'm just saying that's how some people have spoke to us and perceived it to be. So I just wanted to make you aware of that and just have a chat with you about that. Yeah. Right? Well, thank you for bringing it to right. my attention. Yeah. You know. I mean, like I said, uh, have. No intention whatsoever no, 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 intimidating. No, I, I'm sure. I, I mean, I, I even, know you, Patrick. I'm sure you, you don't have any intention that whatsoever. Even where, even where, you know, kids have gone by swearing yeah. and whatnot, yeah. and when I point out yeah. to them and say, you know, you're too young for that yeah. language, young man, sort yeah. of thing, I'm not being harsh with them. No, I'm no, not no, pointing no, no. the finger. Or no, it's just, thing. just, uh, just obviously as you're doing just make sure that you're, you're careful because some people I don't want to feel intimidated when they're walking yeah, past. Yeah, that's no problem. I can All agree right. to that. That's no problem. Bye, Patrick. Cheers, Patrick. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. My friends, this gospel message is for whoever would seek Him. And that is the glorious good news about it, isn't it, really? Because if you think of your life in the light of God, who is holy and righteous, each and every single one of us have got more than enough reasons to think that this Word of God could never surely be for us. That God would never surely receive me, who has sinned and who has led a life contrary to Him. That could never be for me. And yet the reality, my friends, is that it is. It's for whosoever would receive it. So no matter how bad or how sinful you might think that you are, the glorious truth is that Jesus Christ's grace surpasses all of that sin. His goodness outruns, as it were, our own feet to do wickedness. We might be going in one direction with certain goals that we have in life and wicked aspirations and all the rest of it. But the Lord Jesus Christ is able to outrun each and every single one of those. And to give you His grace, to give you His mercy, to give you His forgiveness and His righteousness. So my friends, when it says truly that you know, to the one who knocks, to the one who seeks that they find, to the one who knocks the doors open, to the one who seeks that they receive, it is a guarantee to you so all of the goodness of Christ that we've preached forth today, all of His joy and His peace and His everlasting life, we desire you, my friends, to come into this and we implore you to seek. We implore you to search after Him. Because He guarantees. That's the great thing about it. There's no sense of, well, if you clean your life up enough, then He'll receive you. Or if you cut this out and uh, live a sort of self-sacrificial life or give a certain amount to the poor or whatever it might be. No, none of that. It is simply that Christ, who has paid the fine, as it were,